Hey guys, it's Liana and I'm here today to tell you every book that I read in 2020. So because I read 104 books in 2020, this will be a really long video if I stop to talk in depth about each of the books. So I'm just going to tell you the book and the story reading that I gave it. And then maybe, maybe if it's a, if it's one that I particularly loved or particularly hated, I might throw in a line or two <laughs> saying something more about it, but it's just going to be mainly a list. So off we go. The first book that I read was Guinevere Deception by Kristen Waite. I gave that two stars. Then I read Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I gave that four stars. Then I read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin, and I gave that two stars. And then I read The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, and I gave that four stars. And then I read A Study in Scarlet by, I was going to say by Sherlock Holmes, by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I gave that four stars. And all of the books that I just listed, I have standalone videos or reviews for them. Uh, the one of your deception is actually a combo where I talked about that and Sorcerer's, uh, no, Sorcery of Thorns. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I have separate videos for those books. Uh, the next book that I read was the first volume of Sons of Aries uh, by Pierce Brown. It's a graphic novel prequel to the Red Rising books. I gave that five stars. It made me cry. The next book that I read was Nocturna by Maya Montaigne. I gave that one star. I have a rant review for that. The next book I read was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave that five stars and I have a standalone review for that. Uh, and it made my best books of the year as well. Then I read The Queen of Atolia by Macon Wellen Turner. I gave that four stars. Then I read The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I gave that three stars. Didn't like it as much as a study in Scarlet, but I quite liked it. Then I read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Uh, I actually have a standalone review for that as well. And I also gave that five stars. And I think that might be on my best books of the year. If it wasn't, then it was a contender. I genuinely don't remember. Uh, then I read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, just because like I wanted to have read The Art of War by Sun Tzu. <laughs> I gave that four stars. Then I read The Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski, which is the last book in the Witcher series. I gave that four stars. I was quite disappointed with it. Uh, I do have a video kind of on The Witcher. Once I finished that, I did a video on, on The Witcher series as a whole. So that's available to you. Then I read The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Uh, I gave that three stars. I was quite disappointed with that as well, but I do have a standalone review for it where I'm like, it was fine, but I don't get why people hype this. Uh, then I read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I do have a standalone review for that. I give that five stars. I really enjoyed it, which I was surprised because I hated, hate's a strong word, but I really did not care for Murder on the Orient Express. So I was pleasantly surprised by how much I loved And Then There Were None. Then I read The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I gave that five stars, but I never reviewed it for some reason. Uh, then I read The Midnight Lie by... Uh, Mary Rutkowski, which I gave four stars to, but I also genuinely keep forgetting that I read that book. I, I literally leaves my brain every single time. Like looking at it right now, I was like, oh yeah. And every time I see it on my shelf, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> then I reread The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Uh, I gave that five stars this time. The first two times I read it, I gave it four stars. This third time I gave it five. <laughs> then I read Lips Touch Three Times by Lainey Taylor, which is a trio of short stories, um, which were hit and miss. I gave the book three stars because the like average was that but like one of the stories in it I really liked and would have given it a higher rating but the other two stories I was a little more meh on. Then I read Malice by John Gwynn which I hated and gave one star to. I have a standalone rant review for that. And then I read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo which I gave four stars to. I have a review for that as well. Uh, mainly positive but like I think there are some easy fixes that could have made it a five star. Then I reread The Wolf by Leo Caru. That was my third time reading that as well. Gave it five stars every time. <laughs> Then I read Defy Me by Tehera Mafi, which is the second to last Shatter Me book. I have yet to read the last one. I gave that four stars, even though it was like starting to wind down for me. And like, I'm beginning to sense that I'm falling out of love with Shatter Me. So I'm very scared to read the last one. And then I read Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore, which I gave two stars to, mainly because there were some very questionable consent things in the romance that I was just like, no. Then I read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which I gave four stars to. Um, I love Oscar Wilde's plays. I love his writing, his like dry wit. So I really enjoyed Picture of Dorian Gray. Uh, then I read Dangerous Alliance by Janiki Cohen, which I gave one star to. And it has appeared in many listicle videos of mine recently where I have slammed it over and over. Uh, then I read Nifron Rising, which is the third book in the Area Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. I uh, gave that four stars. Then I read Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. Uh, which was hilarious and <laughs> gave that four stars. Then I reread Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, um, which, you know, it was a reread. I gave it five stars. Then I read Prosper's Demon by 
K.J. Parker, which is, I guess, a novella, not a novel, um, which I quite liked, and I gave that four stars. Then I read The Wolf of Orin Yarrow by K.S. Vioso, which is the first book in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen, and I also really liked that, and I recently recommended it in a video. I gave that four stars. I finally read Vengeful by the E. Schwab, which is the uh, sequel to Vicious, and I gave that five stars. Then I read The Silence of Bones by June Her, which I gave four stars. Then I read The Paris Hours by Alex George, which... Kind of like The Midnight Lie. I keep forgetting that I read that, but I gave it four stars. I thought it was pretty good. Then I reread Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, which I gave four stars. Uh, then I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, uh, which is the first book in the Truly Devious series. Uh, read that all in one sitting. It was a pretty great time. Gave that four stars. Then I reread The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Even though I had a great time with it, I still gave it three stars the second time. Then I read Uprooted by Naomi Novik, which I hated and I gave one star to. I have a standalone rant review for that. Then I finally, finally finished Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I didn't hate it as much as I brooded, but I didn't like it. Give it two stars. <laughs> I have a standalone rant review for that as well. Uh, then I read The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovich, which is the first in the all for the game series. As you will soon see, I read the next two as well, and I have a review, a video uh, of the trilogy as a whole. Uh, then I reread The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie, which is the third and final book in the First Law trilogy. Gave that five stars. Then I read the Raven King, which is the second all for the came book. I gave that three stars. Then I read Five Feet Apart um, by Rachel Lippincott and Mickey Daughtry and Tobias Laconis. I bawled my eyes out reading that and I gave it five stars. Uh, then I read After the Armistice Ball by Katriana McPherson, which is the first uh, in the Dandy Gilver Mysteries series. And I had a really good time with that. I gave it four stars. Uh, then I reread Morning Star by Pierce Brown because I was trying to reread all the Red Rising books before reading Dark Age. I gave that five stars again. Uh, then I finished the All for the Game series with The King's Men by Nora Sakovich. Gave that three stars. Uh, then I read Beach Read by Emily Henry, which I gave five stars to. I really liked that one. Then I read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and my mind was blown, and I gave it five stars. <laughs> then I read The Water Dancer by ta Coates, also amazing. I gave that five stars. Uh, then I read Edenbrook by Julianne Donaldson, which was a really sweet romance that was just just a nice, nice, pleasant time, and I gave that four stars. Uh, then I read The 39 Steps by John Buchan, Buchan? Um, because I quite liked the Hitchcock movie, um, and... I also like the new adaptation of it from like maybe like 10 years ago um, and I concluded that both movies vastly improved on the source material. I didn't really like it. I gave it three stars because it's it's a, it's an old like a lot of its problems are because it's old but I also unhauled it. <laughs> uh, the next book that I read was The Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. I uh, recommended that recently. I gave that four stars. Then I read Between the World and Me by ta Coates. That was on my best ofs for the year for sure. Give that five stars. Uh, that is required reading. Everyone should read that. Uh, then I read The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, and I gave that five stars. Also bawled my eyes out. <laughs> then I read Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Uh, that was on my best ofs for the year. Gave that five stars. Uh, then I read Normal People by Sally Rooney, which I liked a lot more than I expected to, and I gave that five stars. Uh, then I read Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames, which I hated. <laughs> I have a standalone rant review for that. I give that one star. Then I read Reread Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Again, rereading Red Rising. Gave that five stars. Again. Uh, then I read The Obelisk Gate, which is the sequel to the fifth season, the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. Gave that five stars as well. Mind continued to be blown. Uh, then I read the first three volumes of Sandman. So I read Preludes and Nocturnes and gave that four stars. Uh, I read The Doll's House, gave that five stars, and Dream Country and gave that five stars. Those are all by Neil Gaiman, of course. Then I read Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and liked that more than I expected to. Gave that four stars. It was really funny. Then I read Circe by Madeline Miller, which I didn't like as much as Song of Achilles, but I did think it was really good. I gave that four stars. And I reread A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. Gave that five stars because uh, in anticipation of the next one coming out. Then I read Daring and the Duke by Sarah McLean and hated it. I think that I made, like, made that my worst of the year. One star. Then I read Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, which I have a review for. I gave that three stars. I didn't love it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I just, I thought it was... Uh, then I read The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Prydain, uh, and I really enjoyed that. I gave it four stars. Then I finally, finally read Dark Age by Pierce Brown, having reread All of Red Rising, and mind blown. It was on my best uh, of the year, for sure. Five stars. Then I read The Liar's Girl by Katherine Ryan Howard, uh, which was a thriller, and it was quite thrilling, so I gave it four stars. Then I read The Sky is Falling, How Vampires, Zombies, Androids, and Superheroes Made America Great for Extremism. 
And it was interesting, but I didn't agree with a lot of its points. So I gave that three stars. Then I read The Vanishing Stair, which is the second truly devious book. I had continued to have a great time and gave that four stars. The next book that I read was By Force Alone by Lavi Tadar. And I thought it was a quite a unique book. So I gave that four stars. I have a standalone review for By Force Alone as well. Uh, then I read The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie, which was like one billion out of five stars. <laughs> Loved it. Was my best book of the year. Have two reviews for it, a non-spoiler, any spoiler review. Then I read The Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King, um, which I really, really enjoyed. I gave that four stars. Then I read The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu, which I liked a lot more than I expected to, even though I picked it up because I thought I I thought I would like it, but um, I it was really good. I gave that four stars. Then I read Skull Duggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. I have a standalone review for that. Really, really enjoyed it. Gave it five stars. Then I read Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Also have a standalone review for that. Gave it four stars. Then I read The Unsuitable by Molly Polig, which I really, really, really enjoyed. I gave that four stars. And I gave a copy to Shea, who loved it. <laughs> uh, then I read The Prestige by Christopher Priest. And I have a, a review or a, a video discussing the book as it compares to the film The Prestige. Um, I thought the book was pretty good. Gave it five, uh, four stars. Then I read The How to the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle because it was the season. <laughs> um, I gave it four stars. Then I read A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik and I hated it <laughs> and I gave it two stars. Then I read Playing with Fire by Derek Landy, which is the second Skullduggery Pleasant book. I didn't like it quite as much as the first, but I did quite like it, so I gave it four stars. Then I read The Wolf by Chelsea Bobolsky, or Bobolsky, um, which started strong but then fizzled, so I gave it three stars. Then I read The Bright and Breaking Sea by Chloe Neal, which um, I have, I don't know, I, I never did a standalone review for it, but I talked about it quite a bit in my wrap-up. I felt had very, very mixed feelings about it, so I gave it three stars. Then I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and uh, Amanda has on her channel our live show where me, Mara, Bethany, and Amanda all dressed up as vampires to discuss it. It was one of my favorites of the year. I gave it five stars. The next uh, book that I read was Black Chalk by Christopher Yates. I didn't really care for it, but I, I gave it three stars. Then I read Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, and I gave that four stars. Uh, next, I read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I have a video talking about the book as well as the various adaptations of it. Um, I gave the book five stars. I really, I really, really liked it. Then I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I gave it three stars. I have a standalone review for it. I didn't really care for and I found it quite underwhelming. Next, I read Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. I gave that five stars. Loved it so much. Uh, I think that was on my best ups for the year. Next, I read The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Gave that three stars. Then I read The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. Gave that three stars. Then I reread The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Gave it five stars. <laughs> then I read The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, and I was very let down by that. Gave it two stars. Then I read The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Gave that four stars. Then I reread The Bone Season, thinking to reread the books in order to read the new one coming out, but upon reread, realized that I don't like this series <laughs> and will not be continuing with a reread or a reading of the new books. So that's one less thing to worry about. Two stars. Then I read The Emerald Storm, which is the fourth book in the Rearia Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. Uh, had a good time. Gave that three stars. Then I read One Day in December by Josie Silver, um, which was extremely frustrating. <laughs> But overall, I enjoyed it, so I gave it four stars. Then I read In a Holidays by uh, Christina Lauren, which was uh, me and Amanda's buddy read for that month. It's on her channel. Our discussion and Bethany joined us for it. I didn't really care for it. Gave it two stars. Then I reread Entreat Me for the third time and gave that five stars. <laughs> then I read A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, um, which I had very mixed feelings about again. Um, so I gave it three stars. Then I read Spinning Silver, and in a surprising turn of events, I ended up loving a Naomi Novik book, so I gave that four stars. I and then the last book that I read in 2020 was The Black Cauldron, which was the second book in the Chronicles of Prydain by Lord Alexander. Had a great time. Gave it four stars. That's that's all, that's all I read. <laughs> um, well, let me know in the comments down below if you read any of the books that I read. Um, if you liked or hated the books that I read or whatever you want to let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Hope this was entertaining for you. <laughs> I know it wasn't too in-depth. This would be like a monstrously long video if I went super in-depth like a full wrap up with all of them. So yeah, that's, that's just all, all. There you go. <laughs> Mission accomplished. My reading goal, uh, my reading challenge goal was 90 books. So I well surpassed my reading goal. So I've made my reading goal for 2021, 100 books. Um, hopefully I surpass that again. Let me know in the comments down below all the things. Uh, I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.